We're back with a special look on board the largest aircraft carrier in the world. It's the USS Gerald Ford. The world's largest and most advanced aircraft carrier, the USS Gerald R. Ford. There are reports tonight of a deployment for the Norfolk-based USS Gerald R. Ford Strike Group. Welcome to the channel. Today, we explore how the USS Gerald R. Ford repairs a $100 million fighter jet in the midst of a deployment often completing the work in just 72 hours or less. This high stakes process keeps the carrier's air wing combat ready, turning damaged aircraft back into mission capable assets without returning to port. We will examine the hangar bay operations the tools and techniques used by the maintenance crews, and a real case study that demonstrates the precision and urgency involved. These efforts underscore the Navy's ability to sustain air power at sea under demanding conditions. This channel is dedicated to military aviation and naval operations, with a focus on the technology and personnel that make them possible. If you appreciate in-depth looks at modern military hardware, please like the video and subscribe for more content. Let's begin. The USS Gerald R. Ford, as the lead ship of its class, supports a carrier air wing of up to 75 aircraft, including FA-18EF Super Hornets, F-35C Lightnings II, E-2D Hawkeyes, and EA-18G Growlers. Each of these jets represents a multi-million dollar investment, an F-35C alone costs over $100 million, and their availability is critical to the carrier's mission. Deployments in contested environments, such as the Middle East or Indo-Pacific, expose these aircraft to risks like enemy fire, mechanical failures, or wear from high sortie rates. When damage occurs, the ship cannot afford delays. A grounded jet reduces the air wing's strength and compromises operational tempo. Repairs at sea occur primarily in the hangar bay, a massive space below the flight deck spanning three decks and over 600 feet in length. This area houses the Aviation Intermediate Maintenance Department, or AIMD, staffed by more than 500 sailors specialized in airframes, engines, avionics, and hydraulics. The process begins with damage assessment upon recovery. Aviation Structural Mechanics, or AMS, conduct initial inspections using tools like bore scopes for internal views and non-destructive testing equipment to detect cracks without disassembly. If the damage is minor, such as a bird strike denting a wing, they might apply composite patches on the spot. For major issues, like engine damage from foreign object debris or structural hits from debris, the aircraft is towed to a dedicated work area. The Ford's repair capabilities have been enhanced by modern tools, including 3D printers for rapid prototyping of parts, laser scanners for precise alignment, and modular test benches that simulate flight conditions. These allow sailors to fabricate components on demand, reducing reliance on shore-based supply chains. For instance, a cracked hydraulic line can be printed in titanium alloy within hours, tested under pressure, and installed immediately. This additive manufacturing, introduced in 2020, has cut repair times by up to 40% compared to traditional machining. A typical 72-hour repair cycle unfolds in phases. Phase 1, triage and teardown, lasting 12 to 24 hours. The aircraft is secured in the hangar, power removed, and the damage section isolated. Crews use overhead cranes, capable of lifting 20 tons, to access components. For an FA-18 with a compromised landing gear strut, AMs would drain hydraulics, remove the strut, and ship it to the AIMD machine shop. 
Phase 2, repair or replacement, spanning 24 to 48 hours. Here, the work intensifies. If the strut is bent from a hard landing, it's straightened on a hydraulic press with laser-guided alignment to within 0.001 inches. Composite repairs involve sanding, applying epoxy resins, and curing under vacuum bags with infrared heaters. Engine swaps, a common mid-deployment fix, involve hoisting a Pratt and Whitney F414 turbofan. Weighing 2,400 pounds, using specialized slings and torque wrenches to secure mounts. Safety protocols are rigorous throughout. The hangar bay operates under FOD walks, foreign object damage sweeps, every four hours to prevent ingested debris from causing new issue. Electrical work follows lockout tagout procedures, and high risk tasks like welding require fire watches. The crew wears color-coded jerseys, reds for ordnance handlers, blues for plane captains overseeing the jet's overall status. Coordination happens via the ship's digital maintenance management system, which tracks parts inventory in real time across the supply department. To bring this to life, let's examine a real case study from the Ford's 2023 deployment to the U.S. 6th Fleet. During a routine combat air patrol over the eastern Mediterranean, an FA-18F Super Hornet from Strike Fighter Squadron 32 suffered a catastrophic engine failure mid-flight. Ingested turbine blades from a compressor stall caused internal damage, forcing the pilot to divert and recover with reduced power. Upon landing, the jet rolled to a stop on the arresting gear but the port engine bay showed visible scoring and oil leaks. A $15 million engine at risk, with the airframe potentially totaling $80 million if not addressed swiftly. The AIMD team sprang into action at 1,400 hours on day one. Aviation Machinists Mates, or ADs, defueled the jet and removed the cowlings using torque-limited tools to avoid further stress. Boroscopes revealed eight blades sheared off, with fragments embedded in the turbine casing. Rather than declare the engine a total loss, the crew opted for a field-level rebuild. They extracted the power plant with a gantry crane, transporting it to the engine test cell, a soundproofed compartment with dynamometers that simulate 100% thrust. Day two focused on disassembly. Technicians stripped the engine to its core, using precision calipers and micrometers to measure tolerances down to thousandths of an inch. Damaged blades were replaced from onboard spares. The Ford carries modular engine kits for quick swaps, and the compressor washed with ultrasonic cleaners to remove debris. Avionics electricians' mates integrated diagnostic software, running fault isolation tests that pinpointed a secondary wiring harness fault from vibration. This was repaired with heat shrink tubing and continuity checks. By 0800 on day three, reassembly began. The engine was torqued to specifications, up to 300 foot-pounds on main bearings, and balanced on a spin stand to ensure vibration-free operation. Back on the jet, the installation required four sailors synchronizing the hoist, aligning the nacelle to within 0.01 degrees using optical jigs. Final tests included ground runs. The FA-18 taxied under its own power, spooling the engine to 90% RPM while monitoring exhaust gas temperatures and oil pressures. No anomalies appeared. At 1,800 hours, the jet was certified airworthy by the squadron's maintenance officer just 56 hours after the incident. It flew its next mission the following morning, restoring full squadron strength. This case exemplifies the fix or fight ethos. The crew's success relied on cross-training. AMs handled structures, ADs managed propulsion, and aviation electronics technicians, or ATs, troubleshot systems. 
Training for these roles starts at A schools in Pensacola, Florida, with advanced quals aboard via on-the-job instruction. The Ford's AIMD incorporates virtual reality simulators for complex procedures, allowing sailors to practice engine teardowns without risking live hardware. Challenges abound in mid-deployment repairs. Space constraints in the hangar, with 40 aircraft parked tightly, demand efficient workflows. Supply issues, like delayed parts from pre-positioned stocks, can extend timelines, though the Ford's vertical launch system for mail and supplies mitigates this. Weather plays a role too. Rough seas cause the ship to pitch, complicating delicate alignments. Yet, metrics show success. During the 2023 deployment, the Air Wing maintained a 90% mission-capable rate, with over 95% of repairs completed in under 96 hours. The human element drives these outcomes. Sailors work 12-hour shifts, often extending into the night under red lights to preserve night vision. Morale boosters include hot racks, shared bunks, and galley meals tailored for shift workers. Veterans from older carriers note the Ford's edge. Nimitz class hangars lacked 3D printing, forcing cannibalization from other jets. Today, additive tech and data analytics predict failures like fatigue in landing gear from usage logs. As we reach the midpoint of this video, I encourage you to reflect on these operations. If you have experience with aircraft maintenance, perhaps from Naval Aviation Service or civilian parallels, please share in the comments. What tools or techniques stand out to you in carrier repairs? Continuing, the Ford's repair ecosystem extends beyond the hangar. The supply department maintains a $500 million inventory, including stratified spares, critical items like ejection seat cartridges held in climate-controlled vaults. Forward-deployed logistics ships deliver urgent packages via helicopter, ensuring no single failure cascades. For avionics, the AIMD's electronics shop uses spectrum analyzers to debug radar faults often resolving issues from electromagnetic interference mid-mission. In high-threat scenarios, repairs adapt. During simulated peer conflicts, like those in large-scale exercises, teams practice hot pitting, refueling and rearming in minutes while fixing minor battle damage. A 2024 drill saw an EA-18G with simulated missile shrapnel repaired in 48 hours. Its growler pods recalibrated for jamming ops. Looking ahead, the Ford integrates emerging. Tech like AI-driven diagnostics, which analyze sensor data to flag wear before visible damage. The next ships in class will feature expanded 3D printing bays, potentially halving repair times for composites. This evolution ensures carriers remain self-sufficient against supply disruptions in contested logistics environments. In summary, the USS Gerald R. Ford's ability to repair a $100 million jet in 72 hours relies on skilled crews, advanced tools like 3D printers, and streamlined processes in the hangar bay. This capability sustains the air wing's lethality turning potential losses into operational assets during extended deployments. If this video provided useful insights, please like it and share with fellow military enthusiasts. In the comments, let me know. What repair story from your experience would make a great follow-up? Thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. Subscribe for more on military advancements, and I'll see you in the next video.